Well, the thing we forgot to show in the previous video was the handle construction and well, the shaft and the threaded rod that goes in it. Have the footage, we just forgot to include it in the edit. So I'll show that off now. The handle was cut on the CNC, uh, although you could do that with a chisel or even just a drill bit and uh, pounding it into the handle shape. Uh, so it's a nut which I glued in with epoxy for extra reinforcement that goes onto a threaded rod. This is an M10 threaded rod. Nothing special there. The shaft is exactly the same as on the previous one, which was just some random pipe that I found or conduit um, laying around and I used a pipe cutter to cut it, made it nice and clean. On the other side we have the flange and that's cut the same way uh, on the CNC um, just without a through hole and this is actually two pieces one was cut on the CNC the other one was just traced out and cut roughly on the bandsaw this isn't actually stuck on it's just a bit of shellac so again there's a epoxy in nut which is coming a bit loose so I didn't use enough epoxy uh, that sits there the material is probably a bit thi thin for a M12 nut. So the second plate was added and then that's just screwed back on. As you can see the on the handle side we've got the threaded rod sticking through and there's a fender washer between the frame and the handle. Uh, and that's what provides the clamping force and should hopefully uh, hold up for many years to come. Uh, we will probably cut this off a bit shorter and put a dome nut or something like that on it to protect various body parts from running into it and, well, hurting. I think I mentioned that we're going to put a piece of plywood here. This protects, uh, or this will catch all the dust and uh, filings from the grinder. Uh, and underneath here we can put in a tray that will have all our sharpening gear as well as any accessories for the grinder or for the bench sander, such as the diamond braiding wheel for the grinder, so that'll live on a little slide out platform like that. I'm using two pieces of six millimeter plywood. One piece is put aside as that will be the base and the second piece is cut into four 76 millimeter strips. Then four 20 millimeter strips are cut. While I was at it, I cut a 76mm block of MDF, though that's not part of the tray as such. The 76mm strips are cut into smaller lengths. The actual size isn't important, but I didn't want the stone centered. Uh, you'll see what I mean shortly. Everything including the offcut is then glued onto the backer board. Don't be an idiot like me, start from the short end first and work your way across. The large offcut piece will be trimmed later. For ply laminations like this, some small nails would have been probably best to tack it all down, but I don't have any that short. Instead, I just weighed it down with some tools and waited. I attached some cleats to act as runners. I then screwed down the top plywood shelf slash dust catcher. After the glue had dried, I trimmed all the edges of the sharpening tray to make it just a little bit prettier.
As you can see, my three diamond plates fit in perfectly. The problem with them is they only go up to 1200 grit. So on the MDF stone thing that I cut, I put some 3.5 micron diamond paste, which is the equivalent of about 6000 grit or so. As you can see, it gets a pretty nice mirror shine on it. The tray then slides nicely onto the car. Eventually it'll get a coat of shellac to match the rest, but for now it's done.